Ian McGill, uh, what's in the Conservatives' manifesto about funding for energy efficiency? Yeah, some of it is um, <coughs> some of it is uh, the Green Deal, which is where we encourage home energy efficiency improvements paid for by savings through energy bills. Um, taking other measures, so as rolling out a smart grid and rolling out smart meters, so people are much more um, much more aware of their energy use and rolling out. Um, rolling out smart labelling so we know we can compare when we buy a kettle, this kettle here uses this amount of energy and this kettle here uses that amount of energy and we can be making decisions on our purchasing decisions on from an educated standpoint. All right, uh, Patrick Harvey, can I just move <coughs> on uh, briefly to an associated question which has also just come in live, and an associated one because it's asking, no tag here so please give your tag, but it's asking what are you going to do to help rural residents access uh, renewable energy to heat their homes so that they can move away from this dependence which many uh, in rural areas in Scotland have on, on heating oil which uh, doesn't tend to be the cheapest form, does it? Well absolutely, investment in micro-renewables, whether that's solar, whether it's heat pumps, uh, there's a whole range of, of technologies that are out there, They're not, there's not one that's right for everywhere, there's a range of them that are right in different uh, parts of the country, different building types and so on. Uh, that investment has to come with some public subsidy, with some public support, because at the moment the market is not going to get going to the, to the extent that it can, it can meet everybody's needs uh, and most people are not going to be able to invest up front. The green uh, program that we tried to persuade the current administration to take on was a massive uh, universal free insulation program but as associated with that was a, a soft loan scheme where you would only pay back the loan when you sell the property and so that the uplift in the property value from the investment that you put in that's where you pay the money back from and it's a, a model that Kirklees local authority in Yorkshire pioneered. It is absolutely the kind of programme, we think it, it would take something like £100 million a year for 10 years and let's not kid ourselves that the money isn't there. Billions of pounds are being invested in the high carbon infrastructure like the extra fourth road bridge. That's the money that we should be putting into the low carbon future to save money from people's fuel bills, to save jobs in the construction sector in ordinary local construction businesses uh, rather than massive multinationals, All right, but well, also to cut our emissions. Okay, we'll leave that there. Sarah Boyack, do you address this in your uh, Scottish Labour manifesto about um, getting better access to renewable energy? Yes, we do. It's one of the big themes of our manifesto and we would like to see 10,000 homes in Scotland by the end of the next Parliament have the chance for solar panels or CHP systems so that the local authorities or housing associations or community groups would get an income from generating electricity locally and feeding that money back into energy efficiency improvements. We think there are massive opportunities here and you know, one of the previous questions was about rural housing. The technology works. There's no reason why we shouldn't have air source heat pumps, mini wind turbines, solar panels in our island communities and our uh, rural communities. The key thing is finding the finance to make it work and we want to use the feed-in tariff and the renewable heat incentive that's coming soon and it does make economic sense. The economy is shifting because the cost of traditional fuels and that's why we've got to move on to renewables but as other panellists have said it's also about reducing our demand and if we're going to tackle fuel poverty and eradicate it by 2016 we need radical measures and that's why we focused on and linking environmental and social justice together, the two have to go hand in hand, and that is central to our Green Jobs strategy and our manifesto. Okay, thank you. And a gold star to the next questioner because they've given their tag. It's the intriguing one of Edinburgh Sparrow. I'm going to ask Shirley Ann some of all this because it refers to something uh, the SNP made in their opening remarks about the ambitious uh, Climate Change Act, which was passed a couple of years ago. Uh, Shirley Ann, what do your party believe is the biggest challenge for Scotland in meeting those? Uh, 2020 climate change targets, which many commentators said were very ambitious. Well, they are very ambitious and um, in many ways, um, as other people have said, the easy part for the Parliament to do was pass that legislation. The challenging part um, for, for everyone is to actually <coughs> implement that and see that happening. We saw the first uh, report of policy and proposals from the Scottish Government um, at the start of this year, which looked at how we would um, implement that um, we can achieve the targets with what was in that document, um, 
There are other aspects which people would like to see us perhaps going further on, but we certainly can do it within Scotland. And the biggest challenge the, uh, within that stated policy is what? I, I think that, that the biggest challenge for us to, to take on, but it's also our biggest opportunity, um, is, is to actually invest in renewable technology, whether that's in Edinburgh or many other parts of the country. Uh, there are enormous opportunities for local companies um, to invest, to create jobs, and actually weave tidal renewable, whether it's micro renewables, um, there are jobs there. So the biggest challenge is to turn around our economy to make people sure that we have the skills to deliver that. That's why we're uh, we're wanting to deliver on green apprenticeships. That's why we're wanting to encourage green jobs, uh, and that's the way that we think we'll do it. We need to turn around the economy to make sure the people are there to actually deliver it and get not just the challenge but the opportunity that that Climate Change Act presented to Scotland. All right, Ian McGill, whoever is in government uh, in a few weeks' time in Scotland, what do you think their biggest challenge is to meet those um, climate change targets? The biggest challenge is facilitating, facilitating people's desires. So people desire to live in a home that's fully insulated. So therefore, we're looking at things like rolling out a green deal to uh, to fund that out of future savings on energy bills. So we're providing the ways for people to make these make these good choices. We're encouraging community-owned renewable energy schemes where local people benefit from the power produced. And we're also allowing communities to host renewable energy projects to keep the additional business rates that they generate. And like we're creating a uh, we're creating a full system of feed-in tariffs, but it's putting in the infrastructure there that's there for encouraging everybody to come along and make the right decisions to reduce the carbon right across the, right across the country. But the challenge, is, the challenge is getting that infrastructure in. Sarah Boy, you were in opposition in the most recent Scottish Parliament. Um, what did Scottish Labour at the time make of those climate change targets and do you think they are achievable? Well, we think they are going to be tough, but we felt that the initial targets the SNP came for were, both, were just not ambitious enough. That's why we pushed really hard. We said 40%, and then the next day the SNP went for 42%. We don't underestimate the challenge. And that's why when we had the climate change bill in front of us, we amended it to include green procurement. We think that's absolutely vital. We spend 30 odd billion pounds a year in Scotland. And that money needs to be spent more wisely. And Scottish government's got to take a lead. It's got to enable the business community through green procurement, through government taking a lead, to change the kind of goods and services that are produced. And we also need to get communities behind this as well. And that's why we would keep the Climate Challenge Fund and look at how it's spent so that it could be spent more wisely. So I think there, there are opportunities here, but it needs government leadership and government commitment to make sure those targets are implemented not just year on year, but by the end of the next Scottish Parliament, what would be achieved if we're going to meet our 2020 targets? 2020 is too far away, so we would like to look at the end of the next term of the Scottish Parliament as well. That's crucial. OK, thank you. Can I just take this opportunity to flag up that it's not just the political parties represented here tonight who have a manifesto, but Stop Climate Care Scotland have issued their own manifesto and you can access it uh, via link on the website tonight or later once the debate is concluded and it includes all the ambitions that the coalition have across Scotland for the political parties and it will be something that they will be holding them to account, I'm sure, over the next uh, few weeks and indeed over the next four years. <laughs>